colleagues, my name is Phoenix and this is the fifth episode of my SKSE modding tutorial series. In this video I will talk about what address library is and why it is needed, as well as about working with objects that are in a binary file. In our case, we work with a program in C++, which consists of different elements such as function, global variables, static variables, static class variables, RTTI, uh, VF tables. These are all objects that the program can refer to during execution. To find out where the program refers to an object, press Ctrl X when the cursor is on the object. IDA shows a list of places where this object is used. For example, the function onHeat is used in three other functions. I have already reversed two of them a long time ago. The remaining two references are x64 exception metadata, which the compiler adds for exception handling. You can ignore this. Player character singleton is a global variable that stores a pointer to the only instance of the player character class. This pointer is used in many places in the program. The constructor of the player character class initializes a reference to the virtual function table at this point. The table is used only in two functions, the constructor and the deconstructor. You have already seen both the player character singleton and the onHit function in previous videos. When you launch a program or load a DLL file, the entire binary file is placed on your computer's RAM at the specific address. You can view this address using the Cheat Engine program. To do this, open Memory View, press Ctrl G and enter the file name. You can also add this address to the cheat list, so you can always see it and copy if it necessary. This address is called the base address of the binary and may change from launch to launch. This number indicates what the object address would be if the binary file were loaded at address hex 14 7 zeros, which is default load address. To find out the real object's address during the program execution, you need to subtract hex 14 and 60 from this number. This way, you get the distance in bytes from the beginning of the file to the object which is called an offset. Then you need to add the base address of the binary file to this number. Try performing this operation for the player character singleton. To subtract the default base address, simply ignore the digits 1, 4. Then add Skyrim's base address. To verify that the data obtained is appointed to the player structure, add this address to the cheat list and read the value at this address. You get the player structure address. Paste it into the request program. Now you see a pointer to VF table and form ID equals hex14. This looks Losable. To avoid adding base address every time, you can use an address of the form binary file plus offset. In the engine program it looks like this. And in request like this. Thus, a more convenient address of the player structure is this. Note that you need to add exactly offset, not an address in either program. That is, ignore the first two digits. Bethesda released update for Skyrim, in which they changed the source code and, as a result, the binary file Skyrim se.exe. The developers could modify the code of some function the compiler could change the sum of a function. Also, 
in a new binary it can inline a function or discard inline. This way, all the objects that could reference it shifted, some disappeared, and new ones appeared with each update. Fortunately, big brain people were able to find a match between objects for different versions of the binary. Each object is assigned a unique number, a KID, which does not depend on the version of the binary. Then, in address library, there are pairs of ID and offset for each version of the binary. This way, the developer takes the offset of the function or variable, finds its ID and uses it instead. Then the plugin will be version independent. Common lib greatly simplifies working with Andreas library, the developer just writes the ID and local offset in the right places. I think it was a very strange decision by Bethesda to release the AE version. They used the newer version of the compiler and changed the layout of some classes. This caused a significant change in the binary file and matching it with SE became difficult. Therefore, there are different and incompatible address library for RE and SE versions. Look, even the file names are different. However, there is a match between ID, AE and SE. Of course, it's not perfect, but better than nothing. If you want to create plugin for both versions of the game, you have to reverse and test them on each of them. For this, you can use runtime library, which provides unifications for different parts of structures. You just need to set the ID for SE and AE, and then call get runtime data functions where necessary. The library takes care of the rest. Personally, I prefer to sit on one chair and do not recommend beginners to start with supporting both versions at once. It is better to choose one, SE or AE, and focus on it. This way you will better understand the process and learn how to reverse and test correctly. Then you will be able to find the missing offsets, reverse and test on the second version of the game. To get the file with pairs of ID and offset for your version of Skyrim, you need to first determine which version of the game you have. To do this, find the binary file of the game and look at its properties. There you can see the details sections, where the product version showed. These are for numbers that you need to remember. The first two numbers indicate the version of the game. One dot for SE and 1.6 for AE. For example, I have the latest update for SE, 1.5.97.0. Next, clone my project from Git and open it in Visual Studio. Then download address library for the version of the game you need. I will show you how to do it for both versions. Create a folder data in the project folder and put address library there. Open the project code. If you are working with AE, uncomment this line. Enter the number of your game version. Name the file and run the project. There is a new file with two columns. ID in decimal format and offset in hexadecimal format. This is the match between ID and offset for your version of the game binary file. I will repeat the same process for AE. Now you have match file. 
you will use it quite often. Let's see how to find the ID for an object. For example, the object player character singleton has this offset. To find its ID, search this offset in the match file. Remember, it should be in the right column. Its ID in the left column. If you use this ID in your plugin, the plugin accesses the player structure by the correct offset for any version of SE. Do not forget to install address library as regular mod and add it as a requirement to your users. Let's see how we can match ID from AE and, and the C versions of the game. This method does not always work, so you need to check the results in EDA and in the game itself. You will need three files. Two of them you have already received earlier, and the third you can download from the address library mod page. The first file is a match of SE ID with corresponding offset in latest SE. The second file is a match of AE ID with corresponding offsets in 318 AE. The third file is an attempt to match offsets from latest SE with offsets from 318 AE. So, if you know ID from SE, you can find its offset in the first file. Then you look for this offset in the third file and find the corresponding offset from AE. Finally, you look for this offset in the second file and find IE ID. For example, I assume that ID player in AE is this. If there is no required offset in the third file, then most likely it means that the object was deleted. Note that I'm talking about objects that are stored in the binary file. These are not the form that you usually see in Xedit, spells, perks, NPCs, etc. Of these forms you can find only player character singleton. It's form with form ID hex 40. And game setting, they are in the binary files too. This method is needed to work with global and static variables, as well as with functions and virtual tables. Don't worry, in the next videos I will tell you about working with game forms, but for now this is not our goal. Before we move on to the practice, let's review the main ideas about address library. When you write plugins, you need to work with different objects in the binary file of the game, such as functions, global variables and virtual tables. Each object has its solid offset in the binary file, which changes from version to version. Knowing the address, you can access and even change the data stored in the object. To avoid depending on a specific version, you should use IDs from address library. You can think of it as a special file that contains pairs of ID and offset for each version of the game. With this file, you can easily find the offset by ID and vice versa. Because Bethesda, AE and SE are significantly different, address libraries for them are incompatible. You can try to find a match between AE ID and SE ID using the match attempt file, but this that does not guarantee success. However, it's still better than finding ID from scratch. But you still need to RE and test another game. If you use common lib, you use address library. Make sure it's installed as mod in your setup as well as you edit it as a requirement to your future plugins. To get the ID by offset, ignore first two digits of the offset. Search it in the right column of the offset's file. Left column contains ID. If nothing found, the object is not in the database. Similarly, you can find offsets by ID. Knowing the ID, you can easily work with objects using the library and your code will not depend on the version. If you need to observe the values of a variable or make change for testing purposes, you can do this in cheat engine or request. 
simply add the address to the cheat list. You can change the value directly in this field. For example, you can change the duration of a block. In the game, NPCs perform two types of blocks, instant and prolonged. There are three game settings that control the duration of a prolonged block. To keep it simple, let's make them equal. In this case, NPC hold the shield for exactly the time specified in this setting. Of course, according to Combat AI, an interruption may occur, but let's not go into details. If you make the values large, the NPC hold the shield for a long time. If you make them small, the NPC still blocks, but immediately lower the shields. After testing for some time in cheat engine, you can choose values at which NPCs hold the shield for a long time. Then, during the plugin loading, you can change these settings as you see fit and release a mod called More Defensive NPCs SKSE and get 10,000 downloads. Then divide these numbers by 10 and get another 10,000 downloads with the more aggressive NPC SKSE mod. You will mostly work with functions, global variables, static variables and virtual functions. You can read and change the values of variables, call and modify functions, as well as hook them. Now I will show you how to do this with examples. To understand what happening behind the scenes, I will first write the code without address library and command it. Then with them. Suppose I want to get the player name. First, get a pointer to the beginning of the Skyrim se.exe file using the get module handle a function. Then add the player offset. Now this is a pointer to memory where the global variable is located, a pointer to the player structure. That is, in fact, this is a pointer to a pointer to the player structure. Read this memory. Interpret it as a pointer to the player structure. Call the function. In general, such code is considered bad. This is a very inconvenient and unsafe way of working with a binary file. I showed it to you only for demonstration. With address library and common lib, you can access data by their ID, not by offsets. And you will not do style casts. These libraries automatically calculate offsets, add them to the beginning of the file and convert data to the desired type. Now 
Now I will show you how it works using float as an example. I want to display the value of one of the game settings. To do this, create an object of type rel allocation of float pointer. This object stores a pointer to float in the binary file. To create it, pass it an object of type rel id, which stores the id of the desired float in address library. Find it. You can work with an object of type rel relocation as with a regular pointer. You can read its value using the dereference operator. But you can't change its value just as easily because it lies in a protected area of memory in the binary file. For this, you can use function saveWrite, which can write bytes to protected memory. It works. Let's go back to the player. For him there is a special static function getSingleton, which returns a pointer to the player structure. Use it to work with the player. It's implemented in the same way I was just showed. It takes an object of type rel id which stores the id of the pointer to the player structure in address library. Now that there is also a double pointer here, one pointer because the global variable is a pointer to the player structure, and another pointer because rel id is a pointer to memory in the binary file. Theoretically, you can change the value of this double pointer too, as we float but I don't advise you to do that. With the function you will be able to do three things. Change their code, call them and hook them. In this video I will tell you about changing and calling functions. Let's take the function getDifficultyMult. It determines what difficulty multiplier is applied to the game depending on whether the player is interested or not. Very fair. I want to call it with different parameters. I already know that this function does and what parameters it takes. The first one is the difficulty number, the second is the constant 24, the third is a flag that tells whether the request is from player or not. If you want to call another function, you need to know its signature and parameters. To call a function from a binary file, Create your Orman function.
Now I will show you how this could be implemented without common leap. The idea is to get a pointer to the function and call it through the pointer. Get the base address of the binary file again. Add the function offset to it. The result is the address of the beginning of the function, which is the same as the pointer to the function. Interpret this address as a pointer to the function. Call the function. Now let's use common leap and address library. Create a second function. Then create a variable of type real relocation with a template parameter pointer to function. Find the ID of the function. Call this variable as a function and pass it the necessary parameters. To avoid writing this code twice, you can make functions of the same signature and use decal type, which returns the type of the pointer to function. Now let's try to change the code of the function in the binary file. Open the function should dodge. This function checks if an actor can dodge an attack. It first calculates the dodge probability, then generates a random number and compares them. If the dodge probability is greater than the random number, it continues to check other conditions such can move or incapitate. If not, it jumps to the end of the function and returns false. I want to make it so that actors always dodge attacks. To do this, I need to remove the check of dodge probability. Open the disassembly window. Got the dodge probability here. Got a random number here. Compared. The GA instruction is that if which check probability comparison. 
execution will either go further or make a jump. Since further down the code are remaining checks, such as curve can move. Then jumping means failure in random, i.e. no dodging will occur. So you need to remove this instruction. You can't just delete the comparison instruction from the binary file, because it breaks the offsets of all subsequent instructions. Instead, replace it with an op instruction that does nothing. To test the idea, first go in cheat engine. Before writing code for such changes, I advise you to check your version in cheat engine. It will be much faster and in case of failure you will be able to quickly fix it. Move to the comparison instruction in cheat engine and replace it with 2bytes 9090 using the replace with code that does nothing option. If you need to return everything back, use the restore with original code option. Test it in game. I know ID of Archer who doesn't switch to melee. As you can see, if Archer doesn't hide behind obstacle, again conditions from depths of combat AI, she always dodges. Everything works, now I'll show you how to implement this in plugin. We already guess that you need to use safe write function. You also know what exactly you need to write, 2 bytes by x90. All that remains is to find out the address where to write it. To do this, create a variable of type realid and call address function. It will return the address of the beginning of the function. Then you need to add an offset to that instruction within function. To do this you need to subtract the start address of the function from the start address of the instruction. You can also configure reader to show offsets within functions. To do this you need to select options, general, function offsets. I don't use this option because I have my own scripts that you can find on the server. Check in the game that uh, the thing works. Look in cheat engine. Nope, nope. Note that if two plugins try to change the same place in the code, there will be a conflict. In this case, only the last change will apply. Sometimes this is not a problem, for example, when both plugins just change the value of some variable. But if both plugins change the code, then the result may be an incorrect function, and the game will crash. This rarely happens because the file is large and the changes are small, and the probability of overlap is low. But still it's possible and it's difficult to debug. Therefore, I advise you to not change the game code in this way if possible. For example, in this case you could hook the call of the function that calculates the dodge probability, and always return 1 in this place. Then the comparison would always pass. Yes, another plugin can override your hook with its own, but at least you don't risk CTDs. Today you learned how to work with object in a binary file and how address library will help you. You learn how to read and change variable values, as well as change assembly code of functions. In the next video I will tell you about hooks. Play C++, reverse carry. See you in the next video.